Hello, my name is Tony Bourgeois and welcome to this week's episode of Community College News. News for all six campuses. In this episode, we have tips on how to protect your kids in your home this Halloween. And our Martin Poirier visits a haunted house. College students are often creative when it comes to eating on a budget. But eating cheaply doesn't always mean eating well. NBCC Woodstock is now offering an on-site food bank to help students stretch their food dollars. Jeff Stairs has more. For some students, a visit to the grocery store means picking up a few inexpensive items and hoping they last through the week. Fresh, healthy items don't always fit into their budget. Capitol Square resident's caretaker Debbie Bustard says while some students have families looking after their well-being, others aren't so lucky. Some students or parents make sure every week or two weeks they get new groceries and all that. But then we have the students that only have a little bit of money and in a very short time, their money is gone. NBCC Woodstock has introduced an on-campus food bank program to help financially stretch students improve their diets. Located here in room 1100, the bank contains an assortment of non-perishable food items. NBCC faculty member Paul Carter says that the need for nutritional aid for students is becoming increasingly evident. A lot of students this year have been late receiving their, their student loans and that sort of thing and so they're living on a pretty limited budget to start out with. Um, I think healthy eating is the part of a productive day, part of a productive uh, work in, during your day and uh, I, it's critical to the success of the students. Carter urges any student experiencing financial difficulties to speak to an instructor or their school's counselor. While other MBCC campuses have not yet established a similar program, many have other systems in place for student assistance. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. With Halloween only days away, Constable John Foster has advice on keeping your home safe the evening of trick-or-treating. Having the lights on is a, is a really good thing. As many lights as you can. Have your yard tidied up. Don't have things lying around. As far as the safety aspect goes uh, for the kids, we'll talk about that first. Um, Really, going out uh, in groups is a really good idea for the younger kids or going out with their parents. And really going out early is a really big thing. We'll have uh, at least five cars out that night, plus other members that are on foot, both in uniform and on plain clothes, uh, in all of the different areas around town. This time of year, many houses are decorated as ghastly and ghoulishly as possible. In Moncton, one house takes the Halloween decorating further than most. Martin Poirier visits a haunted house to find out why. You would be hard pressed to miss this house on Broadview Street. With everything from zombies to alien brides, this property is the most haunted place in the city. For many of us, decorating for Halloween is a small affair. But for one family in Moncton, it has reached a whole new level. Bob and Bonnie Griffith are working hard to finish last minute details. This family is serious about Halloween. They start early. It starts in about September when the kids go back to school and they all say, oh, there's the Halloween house. There is more to this house than its ghoulish exterior. Their efforts are also helping the greater good of the community. People from Calgary come by and suggest that, that we do a food drive for the food bank. So that's how we started eight years ago. And, and in eight years, they've raised 4,800 pounds of food and about $5,600. One year we raised $1,635 and about 700 pounds of food. Pretty near every year for the last five, we raised at least 700. So it's down a little bit, but then so is the economy, so. The Griffith family is urging anyone who stops by to bring non-perishable food items or to make a donation. We'll continue until, you know, I guess forever, maybe <laughs> somebody else takes it over. For this family, Hollow's Eve isn't just about tricks or treats. It's about the spirit of giving. In Moncton, Martin Poirier, Community College News. MBCC campuses are getting into the spirit of All Hallows Eve. There was stabbing, <laughs> scooping, and many different faces. The Woodstock campus showed off their spirits for the haunted holiday with a pumpkin carving contest. It's a learning experience because I'm no, a computer guy. I don't play with pumpkins, I play with computers. Probably gonna stick it in the window at my apartment because it's the only place you'll be able to see it. That is shit, that is chef <laughs> Although Jason Tompkins says he was forced into the pumpkin carving contest by classmates, he enjoyed the experience. But I find it very intriguing and artistic. The competitors finished their carvings. All eight entries were judged by the cafeteria staff. 
The judges had to choose between the hand of God, cat, Jack from the Nightmare Before Christmas, and other funny faces. First place was won by Tasha Ann Palmer. Hold up your pumpkin. Second yep. by Jessica Chapel, and third place by Jason Tompkins. Winners were awarded up to $15 in cafeteria cash. It's often chilly on Halloween, a reminder that winter is quickly moving in. Homeowners are already looking for ways to stay warm without wasting cash. Jill Constantine shows how we can carve a few bucks off the energy bill. Jeff Matheson is an energy evaluator. He says the biggest mistake people make is substituting energy efficiency for resale value or beautification. And a lot of people will cover something up in favor of making it look pretty and neglect things like insulation. And that's a big, that's a big mistake. Hector Doron with Efficiency New Brunswick says about one third of your home's heat leaks out through small cracks. But he says even on a tight budget, you can make your home more efficient. If you don't have a, a big budget, you can buy, uh, for an example, a plastic shield that would go over window. So you may not be able to replace the window, but you can still stop the wind from coming true. The south of the house is, is here and all the, uh, it's all windows facing south. For homeowner Richard O'Leary, efficiency has always been a concern. Three years ago, he built a new home that runs off solar energy. He has cut his heating bill by one quarter. O'Leary believes that everyone should have their homes inspected by an energy evaluator. Some people are reluctant to pay for expensive upgrades, but he insists that it's a money saver in the long run. In St. John, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Now for editorial this week. Which is best for you, university or college? Cal Dupont thought about this question and here is his conclusion. I'm a university graduate and a college student. Like most college students, I have developed some strong opinions on our state of post-secondary education. As a 17-year-old high school grad, I had no idea where I wanted to go. All my friends were planning to go to universities across the country and I figured that was the only option. With little to no guidance in high school, I was unaware of my options. I enrolled at Trent University as a history major, only to transfer to Brock the following year. Throughout university, I blindly went through the motions along with the thousands of other numbers attending school. I say numbers because in the large scheme of thing, I think university students are not treated as individuals. Over 40 different courses and 30 different profs, I only think three actually knew my name. You may think this was my own fault, or was it the institutional's understanding of the significantly high dropout rate in post-secondary education? Thousands of fresh high school grads are accepted into university every fall. According to StatsCan, more than one out of seven drop out by spring. And more students will drop out in years two and three. Why? Because students don't know what they want to do and some cannot afford the high tuition. If people knew this, would as many people attend? I don't think so. Universities need the high intake of students in order to pay for professors' research. So do they care if students leave? Students they don't even know. It's just another number gone. I was one of the lucky ones to survive university. But what I came out with was a piece of paper which actually had my name on it, not my number, and no real job opportunities unless I opted for more schooling. And I was saddled with over $20,000 in debt. Now compare the cost between university and college. The elite world of university will cost you at least 20 k and no promise of employment. For a quarter of the cost, you can achieve an education with hands-on training to truly prepare you for a career. Consider this before you pay that $5,000 a year tuition. With small class sizes and the opportunity to actually know your instructors, my experience has been astronomically enhanced. Being in class for eight hours a day, five days a week may seem crazy, but it will prepare you for the real world. Unlike my university experience, where I gained little to no valuable work skills. Between going back to university or college for journalism, the choice was clear. The reality is I would not gain the full rounded experience I wanted. I would be taking courses that in no way, shape or form had anything to do with journalism. 
The point of my rant here is to let people know there are more viable options in university. Secondary school systems tend to create a notion that college is for the less educated. By having university and college dream courses, many kids are unaware of what they may be setting themselves up for or missing. It seems as though many people entering post-secondary education are being pushed into the university stream, overpaying for an education that does not always prepare them with real life skills needed to succeed in the workforce. This is my view from my own experiences. I know that there are a tremendous amount of people out there who have succeeded in life through university, but college can offer you something that is totally different that you may not see on the surface. That's our show for today. For more of our work, visit jschoolmbcc.ca and send us your story ideas by email at jschoolmbcc at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and happy Halloween.